presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to uh, Alan Homosasa. Hey, Al, what's going on? Uh, isn't it wonderful? This gentleman here with the gold report, right before the market fell apart, ended up with PAAS. We had a 98% gain in a year. And, uh, I mean, you weren't 99% proof like Irish whiskey, but we had a good gain there. You always told us to do what we feel comfortable with. And if I lose a little bit of money on the table, I will, but I know that I just pocketed eight or $9,000 in two weeks. That's a beautiful thing, man. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> Okay, folks, this is Larry Pesaveno setting in for the master himself, Tom O'Brien. I'm going to share with you, this is the uh, Berkshire Hathaway Holdings, folks. Someone shared this uh, graph with me this morning, and I just couldn't believe it, that 41% uh, of Mr. Buffett's holdings are in Apple. I mean, I, I know this is a couple months behind because, you know, they have a lead time on these things, but that to me was really, really shocking. I was thinking it would maybe 10 or 12% at the most. But the fact that he was so heavily, hey, and it's been going up, you can't, you can't knock the master himself. But that's the main thing. The reason why I wanted to see that chart or to show it to you was because we are setting over what we think could be one of the very best uh, buying opportunities we've had in Apple in a very long time. I want to bring this up to you uh, right now. You'll be able to see the long-term chart going over the last year and a half. And there we are. We're coming right into the 78% level down here. You can see just a tiny bit lower than where we are right now, probably around 35, I believe, somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, and that should happen, uh, I would think, uh, either uh, Monday or Tuesday. And the reason why we say Monday or Tuesday is we've been watching the market unfold in a bearish pattern for quite some time. I think what we'll do now is just go up and take a look at the uh, E-mini S&P uh, over the past, uh, this is a daily chart, of course. Uh, this is over the past six months, and I just want to show you that this is not a surprise, us being down 20%, because the market has been telegraphing for a long time that it wants to go lower. You notice that we had this really strong rally up here into the 61% retracement here uh, in March. We came down, and each one of the rallies, folks, stopped at a 382 retracement. And when you see that, it's very, very bearish. And now what we've done is we've taken out these lows right here, which is what we should have done. Because what we did is we do time counts and compare it to other cycles. And what we're watching is the cycle from the May 4th high, which was right here. If you go out, to, uh, let's try it again, Larry, let's do it right here. Uh, from this number of days out, if you go out 22 days, that takes us in to uh, the 22nd of May or the 23rd of May. Now, maybe it's going to be a bottom. Maybe the bottom was today. I don't know. All I know is this is a very, very important area in time and price, and it means something, and it's very significant. Uh, early this week on Wednesday, we had the market was down 1,200 points, folks. We hadn't seen a 1,200-point down move in the Dow Jones for a very, very long time. And that was a bit of a surprise. However, on that day, I'm going to bring it up to you. Those of you that own the Floor Traders Handbook, you'll be able to see what we follow is standard deviations. And that's standard deviation from the mean. And when they get past one standard deviation, there's problems. And notice we made a beautiful, uh, perfect standard deviation. And what did we do? We rallied up to a 382 re retracement of the high right here over a three-day period. That came in at 39.50 last night. And our low today was uh, 38.20. So I think I don't know where we're closing because we've got another hour to go yet. But uh, somewhere in this ballpark is going to be a really there's going to be a real stand on this because if we start going closing below one standard deviation, this is where the option traders come in and they have to protect their positions because if they get much lower, they have to begin covering and that means they've got to start selling and that's when the down move can really really accelerate. Uh, to the downside. But remember, we've been going down for quite some time. The NASDAQ is down well over 30%, I believe, uh, during this time, and about 20% in the S&P, and I think it's about 19% uh, in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. But 
you know, this, we've been going down. This is not a surprise. We see it every day. Anytime you see the Dow down 1,200 points, you ought to pay attention to that. Now, the prediction that I made, and I thought it was going to happen either today, Monday or Tuesday, I believe that we're going to see a down move in the Dow Jones of 2,000 points in one day. Why do I say that? Well, the biggest down move we've had thus far has been 1,200 points. If you multiply that times 1.618, that gets you out to 2,000 points, and that's where you get to the price level that we're looking at of possibly going down, you know, 2,000 points. Get us down to around 28,000, uh, I believe, uh, in the Dow Jones. And the number in the uh, – we'll get the number here in the uh, the E-mini S&P here. We'll just bring it up. You'll see how close we are to what, what I think could be a, a, really, a, a really interesting bottom here. Folks, if you like ABCD and you like Fibonacci numbers – Take a look at this weekly chart. I'm going to describe it to the folks that are not uh, on the on the air that are driving in their cars, and you'll notice here uh, this was the 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 COVID low was right back here. There we came into March 27th. The market dropped that much from the high that was a previous high, and from then on, all we did was continue to go higher for the next year and a half. Now what we've done is we're making an A. B, C, D pattern on the weekly chart in the S&P at 37 and change. Okay, we're, we're 38 and change right now. That means that we come in here Monday and we don't break below that 3,800 level, which is at 37,000. <laughs> Let's try it again, Larry. 3,760. That is going to be a really good buying opportunity. And why do I say that? Two factors. If you look at the AB leg, all right, the AB leg came down eight weeks, rallied up five weeks, and now we're in the eighth week coming in Monday morning on the 13th of, uh, of May, 23rd of May. So the day that we're looking at is the 23rd to the 24th of May at this level. Now, there's a caveat here. If we are sharply lower than 3,700 on uh, Monday, then we're going to go down all the way down to here. And that is a big drop, folks. That could be a really big one. This has been one of the most orderly bear markets that we've seen in, in quite a bit of time. This one with COVID was not orderly. That was just straight down. They took no prisoners back in here. But here, look what, what, we, look what we've done to some of these stocks from this level right here. Folks, back in January, I mean, you know, Peloton, uh, I mean, oh, my gosh, you can Robin Hood, Ark. I mean, there's so many of them. You can just write a book. Netflix. Oh, my God. Netflix from 700 to 160, you know, uh, Facebook, you know, dropping, uh, what, 200 and some dollars. No, more than that. So anyway, these are these are huge moves. And I think they're very representative of what we've got going, you know, in the market. Now, something unusual happened this past uh few weeks here. Let's get this up here. This is an historic chart. Hey, let's take a break. where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect the hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. 
Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, we're back, folks. Larry Pesavento setting in for Tom O'Brien. Tom will be back with you on Monday. Uh, as you're looking at this graph that I have up here, it shows the number of times that S&P has moved more than 1% in a day. And this is historic, folks. You can see it's only happened uh, like four times in the last hundred years. So it's it, this is a lot of selling coming in, but the market has held it up held up really well. This is not a crash type bottom like we had in 2000 or 2008 or 2009. It's very very orderly, and the fact that it's sitting right here at the 382 retracement, and it's taken since January to get here. If you would have just pushed this chart up and not tell me whatever it was, I would have to go in Monday buying it blindly, I think. But, uh, you know, we don't have to do blindly here. We can make a few decisions on our own. So we want to watch this level of 3760. That's the real key level to watch Sunday night. Anything below 3760 on Sunday night or early Monday morning would tell us we're probably going to go a lot farther and very, very quickly also. Um, the we have not had a situation where fear has hit the market even with a 1200 point down move it was nonchalantly taken by CNBC and by uh, Bloomberg both that was just basically oh yes it's a big correction but we've seen these before and yeah that's true maybe it's going to take a two thousand dollar down move to shake them up a little bit but we're very very oversold and the market long term is bullish as you can see from that S&P chart even the NASDAQ is still bullish, as, as massacred as it has been. And we're very close to these ABCDs. Uh, in my newsletter, Trade What You See, I put these in for the NASDAQ, the S&P, the Dow Jones, and the Russell each week. So you can see which ones are, are leading the market. And that's what we're trying to do is to find a good place. Frankly, you know, I've been bearish for a long time, folks, as those of you that follow my newsletter uh, actually, ever since uh, January 4th, when we made the big ABCD up there, and especially since May the 5th. May the 5th to us, folks, was something that was very, very historic because of the fact that the market, how it was re reacting within the eclipse of the 28th of April, rallying uh, eight days into the 5th of May. And historically, that says, uh, with the, only had eight samples, but all eight, all eight of them worked, that the market went down taking out that low uh, just every single time. And so that's why it looked very, very interesting to us. But each of the rallies, and I bring it to your attention because, you know, we follow Fibonacci numbers all the time at Trade What You See, and it's not what you 
think it's it's not what you think it's how you think you'll notice here that each of these rallies after you see the first 382 retracement you have to start to you know to expand the second one look look four days to make a 382 retracement four days to make a 382 retracement two days to make well four days to make a 382 retracement here this is telling us folks that this is something that is very very important and that one we had on wednesday folks we were at we were at 4095 you know we've dropped 400 36 500 point 400 point 450 points in three days wednesday thursday friday I mean that's a that's a big move down and so it's going to be really interesting how this market comes in on sunday night in Oh, looks like, do we have a caller coming in? Oh, it's Tom line. He, he's got a lot more phone lines coming in. So we have someone calling in for Mr. O'Brien. I hope he's not too disappointed. George from Massachusetts, what can we help you with, my friend? Uh-oh. George, are you there? Well, I had George for a minute, and then it was disconnected. I don't know. It's... uh. He, he realized it wasn't Tommy, and he probably got disappointed. What I'll do if he's listening, I'll give you my two cents worth, George, on gold. I was one of the things I wanted to cover uh, here today. So I think that we're still in a bear market in the gold market, I believe. Uh, my, my objective on this gold is if we can get gold down to the 1712 area, uh, in the next, uh, we're not very far away. That's only about 80, well, about 100 bucks. And remember, we dropped 100 dollars here. We've been bearish this whole way, just like we were in the S&P. Each of these rallies were uh, very, very sparse, and then we finally had the big ABCD over a three-day period yesterday up here at uh, 30 at 1846, and now we back down below that 1830 level. That tells us that that ABCD is going to be down. A lot lower. I am extremely bullish gold long term, folks. But what we'd like to see is a big washout. The same thing, I don't do much in cryptocurrencies, but I've been watching it very, very closely because I think that is going to be something that's going to be important. It cannot be a bubble, folks. Bubbles don't last 12 years. Bubbles last, they go up and they go down and it's all over and everybody forgets them. This thing has got legs. And not only that, they got to a $3 trillion. Uh, evaluation when Bitcoin was 67,000, now it's 28,000, and we believe that it's going to 10,000. And all that is, folks, during the life of Bitcoin, going back 12 years, it's had four 80% corrections. This would be the fifth one. And so that's why it's going to be really interesting to watch Bitcoin if we do get to that 10,000 level, because it could offer some fabulous opportunities for folks that are looking for something a little different you know, in their portfolio. I know very little about them. All I know is there's some pretty smart people that believe in them, and there's some pretty smart people that think it's uh, a cannon fodder, too, and that one of them is going to be right. But right now, the market is saying that the Bitcoin or blockchain uh, scientific stuff is, is here to stay, and that's what we'll be looking at. Now, let's get back to see where is this money going that we have coming into the market and this of course is the one of the largest markets in the world is the treasury bond market and uh, we've been bearish this for well over a year and a half when they started talking to us about how important it was for negative interest rates you know folks i don't i never did take a bite out of that apple because the bonds are up at 171 now we got all the way down to 135 and they're still trying to tell us that it's uh, negative interest rates. Not so. But you can notice here on this daily chart, we do have the very first significant ABCD pattern forming up here in the Treasury bonds up around this 144 level. We're trading at 142 right now. With any more weakness in the stock market, you know, you're going to see this uh, hit probably Monday or Tuesday and if it gets really crazy you know you could get all the way up into this area here of 140 uh, 146 or maybe even 150 if it gets really crazy because people use the bonds as a flight to quality which is like you know throwing gasoline uh, to try to put out a fire but that's neither here nor there it's my opinion that the Federal Reserve is between a rock and a hard place the things they've done over the past uh, two and a half years or ten years whatever it happens to be with quantitative easing are coming home to roost now and I'm going to show you some charts when we get back from the break from our good friend Stan Harley of the Harley stock market letter explaining you know what has happened and why we're seeing this uh, huge moves in some of these markets and Stan has been bullish for quite some time he turned bearish about a month ago 
and uh, you can see that we've had a pretty good correction here but we'll share Stan's charts with you when we get back from the break so if you do have any questions 877-927-6648 I'll be happy to answer them for you uh, if I can and then we'll we'll get back to the programming after we come back from the next break and I think we're just about ready to take that break right now and when we get back we're going to talk about the work that Stan Harley had shared with us at 11 o'clock this morning. We'll be right back, folks. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, JDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com. <laughs> Okay, we're back, folks. This is Larry Pesavento setting in for Tom O'Brien today. Tom will be back with you on Monday. Uh, this next chart comes from Stan Harley of the Harley Stock Market Letters. I've known uh, Stan for just about 50 years. He's been in this business for 40 years. He's a perennial uh, award winner as far as timer of the year. Uh, and what he's showing here is a long-term picture in the S&P 500. And he feels very confident that we have made a major top here into January uh, 22nd of this year. The actual high came in on January the 4th with the S&P trading at uh, 4,800. We are now trading uh, 1,200 handles lower than that, which is roughly 12, 20%. And so we should be due for some type of a rally uh, from this level. Now, this next chart uh, is part of what Stan does so extremely extremely well and that is he looks at cycles and if you'll notice here 
he's recognized you know that we've had the big sell-off but as you can see now we're at an area now where we should be getting ready to have a bounce this is the bounce that we're looking at uh, that I'm looking at coming in next week sometime between the uh, 22nd which will be Sunday night uh, going into all next week but the key figure there is below 3700 uh, in the uh, S&P would tell us that uh, we'll be going down a whole lot lower. Stan's projection here, this happens to be the Dow Jones, and he believes sometime in the fall the Dow is going to hit 28,000. Well, it's trading at around 30,000 something right now, 30,009, something like that. I don't know what it is, 30,700. You know, that is not very far away, folks, a couple thousand points, and you could be there. And as, you know, as I mentioned earlier, the first drop that we had was 1,200 points in the Dow. You multiply that times 1.618, and that's where you get to that point. The Where that 1.618 comes from, folks, goes back to 1987. I was on the show with Bill Griffith and Sue Herrera, Ron and Sana, at the old uh, KWHY in Los Angeles at, uh, at FNN, Financial News Network. I was a regular there because I had called the top of the stock market on August the 25th of 87, and I told Bill on the air that sometime during the month of October of 1987 that we would have a move down in the Dow of more than 300 points. And Bill said, well, how do you come up with that figure? And I said, well, the previous biggest drop that we'd had in the Dow was at 191 points. So if you multiply 1.618 times 190, uh, you're going to get right at uh, 310. And the market, of course, was down 555 points that day with a base of 26,000, folks. So that was a 16% drop in one day. And that happened to be the best buying opportunity of the 1980s. And boy, let me tell you, folks, there were 1,600 issues on the New York Stock Exchange that day, folks. Only 13 of those issues were up. And historically, if you would have looked at those 13 issues, what they did after that time frame, you'd be really surprised at how bullish they really were. Stop and think just for a moment. The stock market is down 16%. On our basis today, that would be down 3,500 points in the Dow. And you had stocks that you wanted to buy, and they were up that day. With everything else being lower, someone is willing to come in and buy. They know something you don't know, and that's exactly what happened to those 13 stocks. They really went a whole lot higher. So uh, we're going to have some fireworks here, I think, this next coming week. Keep our heads above uh, water here, and I think we're going to be okay. No matter what, we're going to get great opportunities here because volatility is increasing. And the other thing, folks, is the VIX index isn't going crazy. You know, it, you know, back in, in, 2000 and, uh, in 2009, the VIX hit 80. And in 2000, in, uh, in 2000, it hit, uh, I think, about 75 or something. So here it is. It hasn't even hit 40 but one time. So this is not this is not panic stuff. So nobody's panicking yet. That means they might not they might soon there might be an outlier event come in here. But right now it just doesn't appear. It just looks like a normal correction that could lead to a very very good buying opportunity. Now this next one is one of my favorites because it really depicts you know what I've been saying for a very very long time. And this is about the interest rate structure, folks. This is the bull market in the Treasury bonds. It started way back in 1980, folks, and uh, it c continued on until uh, 19, it was actually two years now since we topped in the bonds. And now we're looking at higher interest rates coming into the market, and it, they're moving very, very quickly. Stan was really kind to show us this one on mortgage rates, and I was really surprised to see what's going on with mortgage rates because I'm certainly not involved in that market at all. But you can see rates have gone from roughly 2.5% to 5.5% in just about six or seven months. That is not good for the housing market, folks, because that means your mortgage cost is going to be quite high and people can't afford to buy them that they could at 2.5%. That's a very negative in itself. So remind yourself, if you got a chance, uh, you know, if you were interested in selling your house now, now is the time. I'd like to give you a little bit of uh, history of Hong Kong, folks. A parking spot in a garage in Hong Kong, just like your normal 
one car garage in Hong Kong sells for $50,000. That doesn't come with any utilities. That's just the parking spot for the car. And it's a minimum of $50,000. And if you're in an area where it's extremely, extremely expensive, like up on Victoria Peak or up above the jockey club there in uh, uh, in Hong Kong, you're going to pay probably seventy-five dollars to $100,000 for a parking space. So that this gives you an idea how out of sight prices are the it's cost per square foot there folks is uh you you just you you can't even fathom how much a uh, uh, hundred square uh, one thousand square foot uh one bedroom apartment in a really nice building a nice building not super nice but you know a nice building is going to cost you well over a million dollars for one thousand square feet are you kidding me I don't understand it, but I, I will tell you this, on a, on a family situation, both of my daughters, uh, when they got married, I got them started in starter houses, and that's been about, oh, 15 and 20 years ago, and each of their, each of their houses is worth over a million dollars, and I said, could I get my money back out of that, and they said, gee, we don't remember that, Dad, hmm, seems, seems, no, they didn't say that at all, but this just showed you what's happened to real estate, folks. Now, one's in California and one's in Denver. You know, they do live in beautiful areas. There's no question about that, but boy, some of these things are really crazy. Now, let's just talk, since we're talking about home prices, uh, Stan brought this chart up, which is the Case-Shiller Index, and he believes that we're going to be topping in this in the next six to 12 months, and that's in this area right here. What he's watching for is to see the blue line cross under the red line, much like we did back here where we had the little bear market just a few years ago. He's watching for that to turn down, and then he thinks we're going to be down for several years, maybe eight to ten years is what he mentioned. He couldn't give an exact time because timing is not his his patterns or what he's looking at, so he just knows if that does happen, then that's going to be the signal that you know we're probably topping in some of these areas. We've seen... You know, prices in some of these areas because of COVID, you know, go absolutely wacko uh, to the upside. And this is what's been happening pretty much worldwide. London is the same. You know, Hong Kong is the same. Dubai, I mean, my goodness, Dubai is one of the best places to buy a house. And then their prices are going up 200%. So it's going to be interesting. When we get back from the next break, I want to talk to you about food, folks, because that's one of my things that I watch in my commodities, and we're going to get talking about food. We'll be right back, folks. Larry Pesavento setting in for Tom O'Brien. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. I'm O'Brien. Okay, we're back, folks. Uh, this is Larry Pesavento setting in for Tom O'Brien today. I wanted to switch gears here. A little bit. We'll get back to the stock market in just a moment. And I've just heard that this had a nice 350-point uh, rally in the Dow Jones here on the close, which I'm certainly glad to see. Now, if you'll notice, hold on one second. <coughs> if you'll notice, this is the price of wheat. We made an all-time contract high here just a few days ago. And you can see here we've dropped over a dollar and a half a bushel. The real key here is you'll notice the market rallied up to exactly a 382 up here at 12.20 a bushel, and is now broken down quite below the uh, $12 a bushel level, getting ready to go even lower. We're starting to see some break in the inflation in corn, wheat, and soybeans, and certainly in cattle and hogs. But uh, that could change at any moment, and things could go back the other way. Longer term, the inflation picture is still here because interest rates are going to go higher. And believe me, folks, uh, what they're telling you in the news is not what really is happening. This is not about demand, folks. It's about supply. And uh, we're going to find out whether it's a demand market or not because with these crops coming in and they're being planted right now, uh, and starting to grow with soybeans, wheat, and corn. They better come in with bumper crops this year because if they don't, and if they don't, then you're going to be looking at something that is going to be pretty ominous as far as foodstuffs. Back in 1970, uh, 1976, 77 through 1980, when prices were going crazy with inflation, and uh, Jimmy Carter brought in Paul Volcker to stop it, and he started it by increasing interest rates you know, by quite a bit, and that continued on for till 1982, and then rates started to drop. But what we want to remember is that uh, once these things start, and if we have any problem with our uh, crops, we export so much, it's going to bring famine in other parts of the world, and famine is what starts wars. So we've got to be very, very careful that uh, or pray that we get the very best of the crops this coming year. We had great crops this year, and we need another crop this year, and that's important. Now, the reason why I'm happy to see that we're having a rally here in stocks here on the close was by the first chart, one of the first ones that I showed today was the standard deviation. And we went down and we took out this low by just a little bit, which means there were just stops there. We took it out by about 10 or 15 points, and we've rallied 80 handles uh, into the close here. That's exactly what we wanted to see. That gives the options players, the option writers, of course, you know, some breathing room coming into Sunday night and Monday. That doesn't mean it's out of the woods yet. It just means that they don't have to do any panic selling on the close here or else on Sunday morning either or Sunday night, either one of those. But, uh, you know, these markets are very, very volatile. They're responding to the news like nothing we've ever seen before. And they go through the same fake news scenario that we see and everything else. Can't do anything about that, folks. That's something we have to live with. And that's nothing more or nothing less than what we have to do. So let's keep in mind that that's it. Now, there's only a little bit more time left, about 10 or 15 minutes. I want to talk to you one more time about Apple because this is, the, you know, this is a big part of the stock market. It's the most widely held stock in the world. 
And uh, I want to get this up here, so pay attention to this. This is a pattern. I'll be on the show uh, showing this pattern also. You're, you're right down in this area here. It's down, and look how many weeks in a row we're down, folks. This is a this is a big move down. We're down, I think, eight weeks in a row, in uh, in the in an apple. Look at this one here. This one was down ten weeks in a row. So let's keep in mind that we have some really important spots coming up here uh, in the apple. So let's pay attention to it as we come into it. And I'm sorry, folks, that's not a it, it is a daily chart, not a weekly chart. But this we've been down actually for eight weeks since this high back in here. When we make the A, B, C, D. Look at how, look what happened when we hit the 50% level, folks. We had an A, B, C, D right there at the 50% level. And the market went up and rallied up to 90% of its high. You know, that was a that was a 30 buck move. You know, that's a big move in Apple. More than more than 15%. So we got some big things happening, but I am very happy to hear that the market is uh, holding up above that. That low, at least it was five ten minutes ago, and we'll see if it's going to continue to uh, to do that. And it looks like uh, it certainly uh, certainly has. Uh, believe it or not, folks, the, the Dow Jones E Mini today, just a few minutes ago, at thirty one thousand two hundred, made a sixty one percent retracement of the whole move today, and the the E Mini S and P made a sixty one percent retracement at thirty six ninety three, folks. It rallied ninety three hands. Handles, folks in two hours if you think that's not volatility you better pay attention because it's coming and it ain't going to get any it's not going to get any better it's going to get better for people like pattern recognition swing trading but uh that's uh that's neither here nor there let's <laughs> that's that's what i love to see I, I wish i could even watch it this last few minutes i don't get a chance because when i'm on the air here i'm prevented from watching well personally preventing him because i don't want it to affect my thinking at all but i had to the beepers went off to told me that we made 61% retracements in just two hours, which was uh, uh, really, really quite exciting to uh, to see uh, what's going on here. Now, uh, someone's asked a question uh, about one of our stocks that we we talk about here. Uh, this is uh, we're going to bring it up here, which is it's just Netflix, and we'll just get this up here now. If you'll remember here, folks, as you can see here, back here in around Thanksgiving, right around November, you can see the big ABCD pattern that was completing right up here, going way back here. There's your ABCD pattern, right around 700. Now, we went below uh, 150, I believe, this week. and uh, But stop and think, folks. Some people are still in Netflix at $5, 10 and $15. So even that, they're still making 10 times their money. But look how much they gave back from 700. That's not a fun feeling. But look at the look how the 382 retracement showed you that the market was heading down. 382, 382, bada bing, bada boom, 382. So it's a big indicator is watch how that is happening. And we saw that all during the month of May here. Uh, in the S&P 500. I'm going to bring it up here to show you that this was the same thing that was happening in the S&P had happened with Netflix. The thing was that it wasn't as volatile as the Netflix was. It didn't drop 80%, but it was still dropping, making 382 retracements all along the way. And that's what we're paying very, very close attention to. So let's remind ourselves. Now, we've got a little break coming up here. I'm going to check out what the market's doing right now. We're still hanging in there with a really good rally here. Uh, we got the, uh, I think we have the, uh, the S&P, I believe, is up on the day again. And I believe the NASDAQ is. The Dow is, Dow is down just slightly. And uh, what else? Uh, not much else is going on. Uh, from what I can, you know, gather just by taking a quick uh, snapshot of the S&P and the uh, Dow uh, E-mini. Gold, on the other hand, let's see where we're doing in the gold market. Uh, it is actually holding up at 1842, so that's still pretty close to the high that we made here at 1846. Uh, it looks okay, and those are some of the ones that we're paying very, very close attention to today. We're also short the euro. That's been acting incredibly well the last couple of days. We went up and made a big 382 retracement in the euro, just like we did in the Dow Jones and the S&P, and uh, then we started to go lower. I'll show the euro chart next. That'll be the next one that we, we show, folks.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, folks, we're back, and I wanted to mention one other thing about these uh, standard deviations that we talk about in our Floor Traders Handbook. This is how the option players determine whether the market is overbought or oversold. We went to that one standard deviation uh, Wednesday. We hit it again today, went below it for just a little bit, and then we took off. Folks, you'll never guess what today is. It's option expiration, and that's how they play the game, folks. They have to come in and start buying this thing. Otherwise, if it collapses, they're in big trouble, and they're going to have to get out of their positions, and they don't like to do that near the lows. So that's what option selling is all about. Learn to be an option seller, not to be an option buyer. If you're a seller of options, you're 85% assured of winning. And if you're a buyer of options, you're 15% sure of winning. So let's remind ourselves of that. That doesn't change the cyclical in nature of what's going on here with our lows that we're fo focusing for. For the uh, 23rd, 24th, 25th, we think we're going to have a big move down. May or may not happen. Maybe today was the low. We did make a slightly lower low in the Dow, a slightly lower low in the S&P. NASDAQ held up relatively well. So these are things that we'll be watching Sunday night uh, when we get, prepare our trading you know, for the next day. So let's remind ourselves, folks, it's not how much money you make. It's how much money you don't lose. Losers think how much money I can win. But winners think how much money I can lose because what they can do is to protect themselves by managing their risk. And that's what speculation is about, folks. It's not about how many trades you make in a row. 
and win. It's how many trades you don't lose. And like Warren Buffett has two rules. One, don't take losing trades. Rule number two, don't break rule number one. Well, you're going to have to take some risk, of course, but try to manage it, you know, the best that you can, and you'll be, uh, you know, far better off than uh, what we're uh, what we're looking at. So we did make. Uh, have a wonderful weekend, folks, and may God bless.